Hi, welcome back to Mimetic Theory 101. Last time we talked about the play Julius Caesar and how in the play there's this mimetic contagion going on that leads to the death of Julius Caesar. And at the end of the class, I told you that I was going to talk about how this can happen in our real lives. Well, when I was in high school, I was really involved in student government. My freshman year, I was co-class president with this other guy. And he and I became really good friends our freshman year. We shared similar interests. We shared, we enjoyed doing the government activities together. And well, while we created this really strong bond over shared desires, shared activities, shared interests, at the end of our freshman year, these shared desires in, in these activities led to a conflict. Because at the end of our freshman year, the next year, our sophomore year, there was only one spot open. <coughs> and we both really enjoyed student government, and so we ended up running against each other for this one spot. Well, that year, we were able to do it in the spirit of friendship. We ran against each other knowing that there was only one spot available for a sophomore to be in student government. So we did it in the spirit of friendship. Well, my friend ended up winning. And like in any kind of politics, when you do these elections, it's kind of like a popularity contest. And so I didn't really take it personally, but I got hurt. My ego was hurt. I felt like my friend was more popular than I was. And anyway, the next year, I wasn't involved in student government. I saw my friend doing all of these student government activities and I wanted to be there with him, but I couldn't. Well, at the end of our sophomore year, there were more positions open for a junior because you could be not only junior class president, but you could also be associated student body vice president. So what ended up happening was my friend ran for vice president of the associated student body and I was junior class president. So we had positions that we could share and be involved in government together. So we went through the year and we, our bond just grew. We had a lot of fun together doing these activities, but we also went to lunch together on the weekends. We played video games together. We watched movies together. We had a really good time together. <coughs> well, at the end of our junior year, my friend told me that he wanted to run for student body president. And I told him that's great, that I wouldn't run against him. Well, the next week, my friend went off to be a camp counselor uh, for an elementary school. And while he was gone, one of my other friends came up to me and said, Adam, don't you want to be student body president? You'd be really good at it, and I think you could win. And as we began to talk, I, I rationalized with myself that I would be the best person for the job, that I would be better as student body president than my friend who was off at the camp. And so I decided to run. And I figured my friend would understand because I had rationalized this all in my brain. Well, I put up posters saying, vote for Adam, Associated Student Body President. And when my friend came back the next week, he saw these signs and he got really upset with me. <coughs> he didn't say anything to me, but what he did was he stopped talking to me for a couple of months. Anyway, we ran against each other for the position, and unfortunately, I ended up winning. And as time went by, a couple of months went by, my friend came back to me and started talking to me as if nothing had ever happened. And at the time, I'd rationalized it with myself that my friend had understood that I was, of course, the best person for the job. But that wasn't it at all. What it was was my friend forgave me. He didn't hold anything against me. He didn't say, first you have to acknowledge that you hurt me. No, he just forgave me. And this is the radical nature of forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about saying that you're not hurt. It acknowledges the hurt, but it doesn't allow the hurt to control your life. It doesn't allow the hurt to control your relationships with your friends. 
So my friend was able to get over it. He got over his own ego. He got over the fact that I beat him in this stupid popularity contest. And he forgave me. And it was only later on that I learned that I was able to understand how radical, how life-transforming this forgiveness is. Now you may say, well, yeah, people backstab each other at high school all the time, but adults don't do it. <coughs> Today is the second day of the Democratic National Convention. Hillary Clinton is going to speak about how Barack Obama is going to be a good presidential candidate. Well, for the last year or so, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama have been campaigning negatively against one another about how the other one wouldn't be as good of a president as Barack Obama or as Hillary Clinton. And now we're supposed to believe Hillary Clinton when she says that Barack Obama is ready to be president, to make a good president. Well, it's the nature of negative campaign to say that the other person isn't good enough. And it happens not only in national politics, it happens in business politics, it happens in office politics. It's this gossip that we do behind each other's back in order to make us feel better about ourselves. And the way to transformation, I've realized, is, is the way that my high school friend acted towards me. It's through forgiveness. It's through this radical forgiveness. That's the way that we can transform the world. We'll see if it happens in our national politics over the next week or so. I hope it does. And I also hope you'll join me next time for Hermetic Theory 101.